أَوَلَمْ يَرَ الْإِنْسَانُ أَنَّا خَلَقْنَاهُ مِنْ نُطْفَةٍ فَإِذَا هُوَ خَصِيمٌ مُبِينٌ وَضَرَبَ لَنَا مَثَلًا وَنَسِيَ خَلْقَهُ قَالَ مَنْ يُحْيِي الْعِظَامَ وَهِيَ رَمِيمٌ قُلْ يُحْيِيهَا الَّذِي أَنْشَأَهَا أَوَّلَ مَرَّةٍ وَهُوَ بِكُلِّ خَلْقٍ عَلِيمٌ الَّذِي الَّذِي جَعَلَ لَكُمْ مِنَ الشَّجَرِ الْأَخْضَرِ نَارًا فَإِذَا أَنْتُمْ مِنْهُ تُوقِدُونَ الَّذِي جَعَلَ لَكُمْ مِنَ الشَّجَرِ الْأَخْضَرِ نَارًا فَإِذَا أَنْتُمْ مِنْهُ تُوقِدُونَ أوليس الذي خلق السماوات والأرض بقادر على أن يخلق مثلهم بلا وهو الخلاق العليم إنما أمره إذا أراد شيئا أن يقول له كن فيكون فسبحان الذي بيده ملكوت كل شيء وإليه ترجعون فسبحان الذي بيده ملكوت كل شيء وإليه ترجعون فسبحان الذي بيده ملكوت كل شيء وإليه ترجعون صدق الله Sadaqallah, Mawlana Lawdim, verily Almighty Allah speaks the truth. My dearly beloved Jamaat al Muslimin, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, it gives me great pleasure indeed to present to you our speaker once again here at Masjid al Quds, and we are very honored to have him here. None other than the Honorable Scholar Sheikh Salahuddin Dupri who is the co-imam at Masjid al Juma in Phoenix in Malnadin, co-imam with Imam Hassan Walele. The Sheikh has been here before and everyone thoroughly appreciated the goodwill message he delivered the last time. And so indeed, it's an honor to once again say Ahlan wa Sahlan ya Fadilat al-Sheikh and ask Sheikh to kindly address us. Falit al Mashkura. Inshallah, before we begin, I just want to request that the brothers um, can come forward, inshallah. The brothers that are sitting at the back from the beautiful etiquette and the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for the, the day of Jumu'ah. From the etiquette of the Salatul Jumu'ah is that we come forward and we sit as close to the Imam as possible. The closer you are to the Imam, the more reward you will get, inshallah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has taught this to us. We make the niyyah that we are following the teaching of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam insha'Allah. And in this way, we will solicit that reward. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from one and all. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala shurafil anbiya'i wal mursaleen. 
سيدنا وحبيبنا وقدوتنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد صلاة تنجينا بها من جميع الأهوال والآفات وتقضي لنا بها جميع الحاجات وتطهرنا بها من جميع السيئات وترفعنا بها عندك أعلى الدرجات وتبلغنا بها أقصى الغيات من جميع الخيرات في الحياة وبعد الممات إنك على كل شيء قدير آمين يا رب العالمين وبعد We begin in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with all forms of praise because only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is worthy and deserving of praise we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send his choicest blessings and mercies upon our beloved master and guide the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam upon his pure and chaste wives, his noble and beloved companions, and all those who follow in the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam until the day of Qiyamah. Ameen ya Rabbal Alameen. If you had the choice to choose the manner in which you would die, if you had the choice to choose the manner of your death, what would you choose? What choice would you make? A lot of people will say, I want to die, obviously with the kalima on my lips. Man kana akhiru kalimati, la ilaha illallah, dakhala al-jannah. He whose last words is la ilaha illallah, he will enter jannah. Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Some people will say, no, I want to die while I'm reciting the Qur'an al-Kareem. I want to die in a state of tilawa. Other people may say, no, I want to die in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Follow the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. I want to die a martyr in the state of shahada. You will have various different answers based on the individual. So if you had a choice, to say, I want to die in this condition. You find some brothers, they may even say, no, I want to die when I'm in sajda, busy praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the state of salah. Where do I want to be in sajda? No, I want to be in the rawda, in Madina Munawwara. I want to be in sajda, in the rawda, in the state of fasting, in one of the holiest of places on the face of the planet. In the presence of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the month of Ramadan. Now we are adding extra things onto the list. We are adding extra conditions. Now if you had a choice. How you wish to die. What would you choose? What would the state of your death be? The question I want to ask after this question is what steps are you and I prepared to make today that will allow us to get to that particular point? What changes do you and I need to make to allow us to get to that specific condition, to die in that state? Alhamdulillah, by the grace and mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed us to witness the new Islamic year. 1445, the year 1445 after the hijrah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Normally when the new year comes in, we speak about January, even if we speak about Muharram. By the general habit of, of the people in South Africa, we follow January, February, that calendar. And for some people, they emphasize the Islamic or the lunar calendar more. Regardless, when the new year enters, generally we find that we start making intentions, resolutions, they call them New Year's resolutions. But we often find that the resolution that we make is one where you'll say, okay, no, this year I want to quit smoking or I need to lose a couple of kgs, so I want to hit the gym this year, shed some weight, I want to start healthier eating habits. So we have these kind of resolutions, generally speaking, and we find that they don't last very long. Some people achieve a bit of the goal, alhamdulillah, other people, they manage for a short while and then it's okay. 
You know, it's just a New Year's resolution, not a big deal. But the New Year has come to us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed us to witness the new Islamic year. So it is an opportunity for us to reflect. The new year of the Islamic calendar begins with the month of Muharram. Muharram is one of the sacred months in the Islamic calendar. It is also called Shahrullah, the month of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is Allah's month. So regardless of going forward for the rest of the year, if we just focus on the month of Muharram, this is a month in which we need to take advantage of the sanctity of this month and try and make some changes in our lives. Let us keep in the back of our minds the question that I asked in the beginning. Keeping in mind the death that we want to have one day. It could be this month, it could be next month, it could be next year, it could be in 10 years time, could be in 20 years time, nobody knows. But what is more important is the fact that the individual has taken steps towards that. You have taken positive steps towards that that change you have started making an effort so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the quran al karim ba'da a'udhu billahi min ash shaytanir rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim fafirru ila allah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says firru flee run rush to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rush to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not walk not stroll rush the reason for the haste is because there is no certainty of time. There is no guarantee that I'm going to live for the next five or ten years. There is no guarantee that I'm going to see my parents grow old. I may meet my death before my parents. And it's very, very common today that parents are burying their children. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant Jannah and Maghfirah to the Marhumeen. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant our parents good health and long life with afia. But there's no guarantee. So because of this, we should have this pressing haste with us all the time. We should have an itch. What more can I do? What more should I do? What more is there for me to do? I should have this, this urge within me all the time to strive to be better and to make an effort to be better. Complacency is the death of a believer. The moment you have the mindset of, Akas alright, I'm okay. I'm, I'm good. I'm doing enough. That is the moment where you die. It is a spiritual death. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us. But the moment you get into a comfort zone, you get into a stage of stagnation. And when you get into a stage of stagnation, it is very easy for you to regress from that point. You can become worse because you've lost your drive. You don't have the motivation to do extra or to do more. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, rush to him, rush to me. Fastabiqul khayrat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in another place in the Quran al karim Hasten towards good deeds. So a person has found himself in the beautiful month of Muharram. And perhaps it is a turning point for you and I. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it such that it is a positive turning point for you and I. I want to just try and touch on a few examples of where you and I can make better intentions where we can have a better focus as Muslims and even as human beings. So how do I come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this year? If a person wants to become closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the only way that you are going to exact change in your life or in your circumstances is to actually start making changes. I'm going to repeat that. 
The only way that you are going to be able to effect change in your life or in your circumstances is to actively start making changes. So how do I take active steps? Inna Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna Allah la yughayyiru ma bi qawmin hatta yughayyiru ma bi anfusihim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not change the condition of any people unless, unless they themselves start changing the condition of themselves. So many of the scholars and some of the mashayikh of the sawf, they unpack this verse and they say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not punish a people unless they make changes to themselves, their actions, their circumstances that will warrant the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if I do things that cause or have a repercussion, if I do negative actions, there's going to be a negative consequence. If I disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I continuously disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will at a particular point, according to his justice, he will punish a person. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't just punish you, he gives you a chance. So when you start changing your actions and your conditions for the worse, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will change your circumstances as a consequence of your action. And on the flip side of the coin, if a person starts making positive changes in his life, and a person does actions that will warrant the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that guarantees the happiness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Actions that remove the, 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 the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will then, because you have changed your circumstances, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will change your condition to a positive one. So if we want change, we need to make change. So I want to, for example, I want to die in the state where I'm reciting Quran. Uthman bin Affan radiallahu an, one of the beloved Sahaba of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was martyred in the state of reciting the Quran. He got shahada, he was busy reciting the Quran al Karim, and he was fasting that day. His wife asked him, Should I prepare your iftar? He said to her, No. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam appeared in my dream last night and he told me, Ya Uthman, tonight you will have iftar with me and Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu La ilaha illallah. And his shahada came before the time of iftar. So if I want to die in a state of Qur'an, I need to become a person of Qur'an. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all a love and attachment to the kitab of Allah. But now I can't recite Qur'an. So how do I change my condition? My brother and my sister, it's very simple. It's very easy. Actively enroll yourself in a Qur'anic course. Make the change in your life. Don't just become complacent. No, I've been butchering Qur'an in a certain way for X amount of years. I guess no faith tak of sistakh. I'm too old to learn. You're not too old to learn. Salman Farsi radiallahu an was one of the oldest sahaba. One of the oldest Sahaba, it didn't prevent him from learning Quran. Many of the Sahaba were over the age of 40 when Islam came to them. It didn't stop them from learning the Quran al Karim. So actively enroll yourself into a class of Quran and take the steps of being a person of Quran so that you have an excuse to attach yourself to the kitab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that you have an excuse that you have to take out time because I have to go and bacha to my ustad. I have to go and recite to my ustad. You hold yourself accountable because when you don't put that kind of pressure on yourself, it's very easy to become lazy. And it's very easy for shaitan to separate you and keep you away from the recitation of the Quran al Karim. Maybe you don't have to do it alone. You can get your brother or your son or your neighbor. I know of an incident. There was a grandfather. He was 70 years old. 
70 years old and he enrolled his grandson to do hifth. He took his grandson that was 9, 10 years old, he took him to the hifth class and he told the Mawlana, I said, Shaykh, please, I want this child to become a hafid of Quran. No problem, they accepted the child. And the grandfather thought to himself, Subhanallah, you know, I'm retired. I'm 70 years old. I'm not doing anything. I might as well become a hafid as well. He joined his grandson in the hifth of the Quran and at the age of 76 years old, this man was a qualified hafid of Quran. What is stopping you and I? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us afiyah and guidance. The point is that give yourself an excuse to do something good, to become better, so that I can become a man of Quran and I can start reciting the Quran more. And inshallah, I will get death while I will recite the Quran al Karim. It is a sharaf, it's an honor that your life was spent with the Quran al Karim and your death was spent with the Quran al Karim. You will be resurrected with the Quran al Karim. Amin Ya Rabb. So like this, this is an opportunity. You ask yourself the question, maybe I want to die in the state of Salah. I want to die in the state of Salah, but I'm not so punctual on Salah. I heard a man make a statement about two, three weeks ago. I couldn't believe my ears. This was after the Jumu'ah Salah. I was in the masjid and I heard this man talking to someone else. And he says that, you know, I don't like to Salah too much. I don't like to salah too much, but I like to come here for fajr. Now, I found this strange because normally fajr salah is the difficult one, you know, but he, he doesn't like to salah too much, but he comes there for fajr salah. Allahu Akbar. But the statement, if you can get to the point in your life when you can actually make the statement that I don't like to salah too much, la ilaha illallah. That is a point where you need to ask yourself, what is the state of my heart? What is the state of my iman? What is the condition? What is my relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do you not love Allah? Do you not love to submit yourself to the one that has given you life? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us hidayah. May Allah grant that man hidayah also. The point is, maybe I'm not that punctual on salah. Start praying salah. Make the intention. This is the shahar of Allah, the month of Allah. I want to be a man of salah. If I want my death to come in the, in the condition that I'm in salah, I need to pray salah. Maybe you are punctual with your five times salah, mashallah. Now let's include the sunan. Let me focus on the sunnah salah. For the next month, two months, three months, you don't have to start everything at once, brother. My sister. But start with two rakat. So we say, okay, fine. I don't pray sunnah salah at all. Start praying just the two rakat before dhuhr. Or the two rakat after dhuhr. For one month. You only do that two rakat if it's not your adah. You're not your habit to perform the sunnah salah. And then from the next month, you start including another two rakat. And like this, month by month, you'd actively take the steps closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until you get to the point where you are rushing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will be praying the Salatul Ishraq, you will be praying the Salatul Duha, you will be praying the Sunnah Salah, you will be praying your Fard Salah, you will be praying the Awabin Salah, you will be praying the Tahajjud Salah bi idnillah, Ameen ya Rabbal Alameen. And who knows, maybe your death will come in the state of that Salah. While you are submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You say, I want to die in the state of fasting. Actively start fasting. Maybe I, I, maybe I don't fast. Maybe I'm not a habitual faster. Some people have a medical condition. We will excuse you from this example. May Allah grant you afi and good health. But there are those that are young and able. You don't have to start fasting every single day. Start fasting only on a Monday with the intention of following the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I fast on a Monday because my Rasul fasted on a Monday. So I fast on a Monday. And we start fasting every month on a Monday only. In the week, I start only on the Monday. I will only fast on Monday. And like this, maybe two or three months down the line, now I can start including a Thursday fast. So now I'm fasting on Mondays and Thursdays. And for the rest of this year, alhamdulillah, maybe that's the only goal that I have. But my brother and my sister, that goal may just bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That one or two days that you fasted may just be the very thing that tips your scale on the day of Qiyamah and grants you entry into paradise. Because you actively started taking steps towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, towards that beautiful death. And like this, you can start then including the ayyamul bid. 
and you start fasting those extra days until it becomes part of your life. Maybe you want to be a better husband. I start making the intention, may Allah protect the marriages of the ummah, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unite the hearts. We all know what is happening, may Allah grant afia. Ya Rabbi Salim. But maybe I want to become a better spouse this year. This is my focus. How do I become a better spouse? So take your wife and enroll in a class, a marriage class, and learn how to be a better spouse. Go and buy books. There's a lot of literature. Go and sit with a scholar. Ask them, what changes can I make to my life to make me a better spouse? To make me a better husband to my wife? To make me a better wife to my husband? Go and learn. You are never too old to learn. Similarly, you never know enough that you're excused from learning more. There's always room for improvement. If you don't have the, the, the desire to keep the spark in your marriage, that spark is going to go. If you want the love to burn strong, you need to keep doing things that will keep the fire going. But the moment you say, nah, it's all right, I'm okay, I can, it's fine. This is enough light for me. It's very quickly and very easily shaitan can come in between and snuff out that flame. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. But make an effort, enroll in a class with your spouse and make those changes to become a better spouse. Maybe you want to be a better son or a better daughter to your parents. When was the last time we phoned our parents? When was the last time we visited our parents? Where are our parents? Are they living with us? Are we taking care of them? Or did we put them in an old age home? What is the condition? What is my relationship with my father? Maybe I don't see eye to eye with my father. Well, when do you want to start seeing eye to eye with your father? Maybe daughter and mother don't see eye to eye. When did you want to start seeing eye to eye with your mother? It's not going to happen automatically. You are going to have to either submit, you either have to subdue your nafs and be an obedient child, or you are going to be a disobedient child. You're either going to choose to have better character and conduct with your parents, or you are going to make the choice to be rude and obnoxious and impatient with them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. But these are things that we can actually do. Start taking gifts. Buy them gifts. Buy them fruit. When you go for your shopping, ask them, Daddy, Mommy, can I get you something? Um, yeah, there's some beautiful bananas. Do you want some bananas? Or I know you like nachis. Can I get you some nachis? Help them. Do things for them. It's the little things that go a very long way. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us afiyah. I have a few more things that I want to say. We'll try and wrap up, inshallah, by five past. But maybe this is the year that you want to start focusing. Make the intention, I want to give more sadaqah. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you with an abundance of wealth, alhamdulillah, brother, use your wealth to purchase your akhirah. Use your wealth to purchase your akhirah. I know there are many challenges. We have brothers that alhamdulillah have taken second wives. They have taken on more wives. Allah has given them the financial means to do so. But I understand there are social challenges in that particular aspect. You don't necessarily have to marry another woman to be able to look after people or other people or other families. I give you the example of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu an. Sahib Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The incident is famous. There was an old lady in Medina Munawwara on the outskirts. Abu Bakr bin Siddiq radiallahu an would go to this woman's house, old lady, every single day, he would make the food for her, he would chew the food for her, she couldn't chew, and he would feed her this food, every single day, he would clean her house for her, he would buy her groceries for her, you don't have to marry the woman to be able to look after her, obviously everything must be done within the limits of sharia, please do not misconstrue what I'm saying, but if you can be a means of assistance for a family that is struggling, be that assistance. If Allah has given you the means, there's women that want to give their children up for adoption because they are single mothers and they cannot afford to look after their children. They are working and they have to be mothers and they don't have a spouse. You can step in there and give financial aid to these people and save that woman from losing her child. 
These are real examples that we have in the community. My brothers and my sisters, may Allah grant us afia. Make the intention this year. That sadaqah that you give will quell the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It will remove difficulties from your life. It will remove sicknesses from your life. You will buy your jannah like this. Spend your wealth in the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rush to Allah. Rush to good deeds. Maybe you want to die in a state of dhikr. I want to die in the state where I'm taking the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But I don't have the habit of making dhikr. Maybe I'm negligent. Maybe I'm very heedless. I'm ghafil of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I find myself in acts of disobedience or just acts of uselessness. I waste hours of my life on social media. Why well, I waste hours of my day doing futile, useless things. This is another chapter on its own. A detox from social media and how to get natural stimulation for your dopamine, etc. It's a completely different talk on its own. But if you want true peace, if you want true contentment, you want true happiness, and if you want to die with La ilaha illallah on your tongue, you need to be engaged in La ilaha illallah as often as you can. It's not going to happen by itself. You need, to, you need to want it. You need to want to do it. You need to keep that tasbih with you. Whether it's bid'ah or not, keep the subha with you. Abu Huraira radiallahu an used to have a rope with knots in it. It's found in authentic hadith. He used to keep a rope with knots in it where he would count the tasbihat on the knots. So if you need to keep a subha with you, a tasbih with you, in order to remind yourself to make the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then do it. So that you can make the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If I don't have the habit, what dhikr can I make? Go and ask the shuyukh, what is the best dhikr to make? When must I make the dhikr? What is the best time to make the dhikr? Take out 10 minutes in the morning and 10 minutes in the afternoon. The average individual spends two to four hours, if not more, on their phone, on social media. You don't have 10 minutes for Allah. May Allah grant us tawfiq. Take the time out for your akhirah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take you in very, very far. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant benefit. Jazakum Allah khairah wa akhiru da'wana. And alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Takbir. Allahu Akbar wa lillahi alhamd. Jazak Allah khair. Shukran. And Sheikh, bayi bayi teramakasi for a most beautiful motivating message mashallah the sheikh started for the benefit of those who came a bit late the sheikh started his beautiful nasiha today with a very pivotal question and that was if you are given a choice how would you choose to die allahu akbar the mere question sends shivers down one spine may almighty allah grant us a tawfiq and hidayah to understand the beautiful nasiha given today and the power of implementation of that beautiful message. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always protect you, Honorable Sheikh, and may you continue to be a great ambassador for Islam. Amin. Ya Rabbil Alameen. And of course, the Sheikh is the Honorable Sheikh Salahuddin Dupri, who is the co-imam at Juma Masjid in Phoenix in Milneton. May Allah preserve you, Sheikh. Amen. Just a few announcements. We have been asked to make dua for Asgar Bray, who passed away, and his janaza will be this afternoon at quarter past three, inshallah. He is from Cryfontaine, and that is Asgar Bray, the son of Haji Yunus and Shamsunisa Bray of Cryfontaine. We also make dua that Allah put sabr in the heart of his wife, Antifaldila, Brainy Solomon, and his children, Kulthum and Abarar. And may Allah put nur in his qabr and grant all our deceased Jannah to offer those. The janazah is at quarter past three from 213 Conroy Street, Peerless Park West in Cryfontaine. Salatul Janazah will be at the Al Hidayah Masjid in Cryfontaine, and they will proceed to the Magbara here in Pook Road, inshallah. May Allah have mercy on all our deceased. Amen. Ya Rabbil Alameen. We have been asked to make dua shifa for uh, Dr. Ashraf Mayed. 
Brother Ashraf Mayad, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him shifa. Not doctor, he's attorney, I think. Ashraf Mayad. And also for Haji Ahmad Sukar, Allah grant him all shifa. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them good well-being. Amin, ya Rabbil Alameen. And of course, tonight after Maghrib, we will have a short uh, program on the 10th of Muharram, just from Maghrib to Isha, inshallah. And also, I would like to urge you to visit our gift shop at the back. There's some new stuff that came in, and it all goes towards the maintenance of Masjid Al-Quds. Amin. And last but not least, I want to say a special well of thank, a special well, special word of welcome to Brother Muhammad Juma. Mr. Juma, all the way from Tanzania. He is the head of the international movement and organization called UNESCO, and they have also assisted us as the Cape Mazar Society, and will continue ask him to assist us that all the Mazars and the Karamats throughout the Western Cape and South Africa will be cleared, will be declared World Heritage Sites. Amen, Ya Rabbal Alameen. So to the head of UNESCO, Mr. Muhammad Juma, we wish you a hearty welcome to Cape Town, and we hope that your short stay in Cape Town will be a pleasant one. And of course, with your host, Mr. Mr. Mahmoud Lambada, who is the chairperson of the Cape Mazar Society. Shukran, Jazakallah Khair, and Baya Bayat Ramakasi. The Honorable Sheikh uh, Salahuddin will also do the Arabic khutbah as well as the Salah, inshallah ta'ala. Jazakallah khair, shukran.
ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم اعز الاسلام والمسلمين واذل الشرك والمشركين رب اختم لنا بالخير برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته الله اكبر الله اكبر الله اكبر الله اكبر اشهد ان لا اله الا الله اشهد ان لا اله الا الله اشهد ان محمدا رسول الله اشهد ان محمدا رسول الله حي على الصلاه حي على الصلاه حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله اكبر الله اكبر لا اله الا الله الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين الذي خلق السماوات والارضين والصلاه والسلام على شرف الانبياء والمرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا وقدوتنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين وبعد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن العظيم بعد عوض بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال الله سبحانه وتعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما وقال الله سبحانه وتعالى فاستبقوا الخيرات وعن أبي يعلى شداد بن أوس رضي الله عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال الكيس من دان نفسه وعمل لما بعد الموت والعاجز من أتبع نفسه هواها وتمنى على الله رواه ترمذي وقال حديث حسن أقول قول هذا وأستغفر الله العظيم الجليل لي ولكم ولسائر المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم اللهم صل وسلم وزد وتوانم ودفدل وبارك بزلالك وكمالك على زين عبادك وعشرف نبادك سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وصحبه وسلم سلم رضي الله تبارك وتعالى عن كل صحابة أجمعين الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله وبعد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن العظيم بعد عوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وأصحابه وبارك وسلم اللهم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ودخلنا الجنة مع الأبرار يا عزيز يا غفار يا رب العالمين اللهم ألف بين قلوبنا وأصلح ذات بيننا وانصرنا على عدوك وعدونا اذكروا الله يذكركم ودعوه يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله تعالى أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقيم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله 
أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حيا الصلاة حيا الفلاح قد قامت السلاة قد قامت السلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله استووا وعتدلوا سووا سفوفكم حاذوا بين المناكب وصدوا الخلال straight in your soft stand shoulder to shoulder ensure that your heels are on a straight line الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين وكذلك أوحينا إليك روحا من أمرنا ما كنت تدري ما الكتاب ولا الإيمان ولكن جعلناه نورا ولكن جعلناه نورا نهدي به من نشاء من عبادنا وإنك لتهدي إلى صراط مستقيم صراط الله الذي له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض ألا إلى الله تصير الأمور الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم 
الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إذا زلزلت الأرض زلزالها وأخرجت الأرض أثقالها وقال الإنسان ما لها يومئذ تحدث أخبارها بأن ربك أو حالها يومئذ يصدر الناس أشتاتا ليروا أعمالهم فمن يعمل مثقال ذرة خيرا يره ومن يعمل مثقال ذرة شرا يره الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا وقدوتنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم ربنا لك الحمد حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه اللهم ربنا لك الحمد ولك الشكر من السماوات والأرض من أما بينهما ومن أما شئت من شيء بعد من الدنيا والآخرة على جميع أنعمك وعلى كل نعمة أنعمت بها علينا يا رب العالمين ما نعلم منها وما لم نعلم اللهم ربنا لك الحمد الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله اللهم ربنا خذ بنا وصينا إلى البر والخير والتقوى وجعلنا من الراشدين 
وجعلنا من الصالحين وجعلنا من المتقين وجعلنا من الشاكرين وجعلنا من الذاكرين وجعلنا من أوليائك المقربين المحبوبين ومن الفائزين في الدارين يا ذا الجلال والإكرام يا كريم اللهم ربنا يا حي يا قيوم اللهم اشفنا واشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين اللهم ارحمنا وارحم موتانا وموتى المسلمين اللهم رب ارحمهما كما ربونا صغارا اللهم ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما اللهم اكشف الكرب عن المؤمنين والمؤمنات في أرجاء الأرض يا رب العالمين ربنا إنا نسألك من كل خير ما سألك منه نبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من كل شر ما استعاذك منه نبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وأنت المستعان وعليك البلاغ ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وأصحابه وبارك وسلم سبحان ربنا رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين الحمد لله رب العالمين